So what you had in there was a big hole. Meantime, uh, forensic uh, scientists and pathologists from Germany had come over and were going all over the country, getting these bodies dug up and verifying that they were German and could they be identified. Now, 58 of the bodies here are identified. The rest are not identified individually. There is evidence, either documentation or uniform, that they're German, but not, not their name. And they were exhumed, and then on a particular week, on a particular date in 1959, they were all brought up here. And they weren't buried in the sense of digging a hole, because uh, there was no soil. The coffins were put down there, one on top of the other, and soil was poured in on top of them. Do you understand me? There weren't a whole load of individual graves. And there's some very, very unusual features about some of them, which uh, we can go into now and I'll show you. Uh, this grave here <clears throat> is absolutely unique in the world. This particular one here. And the reason it's unique, well, you start off with two in the one grave, which is unusual, but not unique. And it's particularly uh, unusual to hear. So two in the one grave. The next thing, when you look closely, one of them is a victim of the First World War, and the other is a victim of the Second World War. And when you look, do a bit of research and look further at it, the First World War person, Erwin Schatz, is a civilian. And the Second World War is a Luftwaffe officer. Then we look at it again, and when we do the research, we find that the civilian from the First World War is a Jew. And of course, the Luftwaffe officer is the German uh, Air Force. And what an extraordinary thing to have a Jew and a German officer in the same grave. And then finally, you're looking at a Christian and a Jew in the same grave, which leaving aside the military team is absolutely unique. Uh, and, and there's no other grave in a military cemetery with that particular uh, combination.